Hi everyone, so today we're going to be talking about gastric secretions and stomach acid in topic D, human physiology. So firstly, let's just do a quick overview of what exocrine glands are. So exocrine glands basically produce and secrete substances via a duct onto an epithelial surface. So this can either be the surface of the body, such as sweat glands and sebaceous glands, or the lumen of the digestive tract and gut, which is the digestive glands, what we're going to be talking about today. So exocrine glands are composed of cells called acini, which are secretory cells and involved in the secretion of these substances. So the acini are surrounded by a basement membrane and are held together by a tight junctions. The acini also have lots of endoplasmic reticulum and it's not indicated on the diagram, but they also have a lot of Golgi apparatus. And this is because these organelles are involved in the processing, packaging, and export of different proteins. So for example, in this case, enzymes for digestion. They also have lots of mitochondria, um, which are able to respire aerobically or with oxygen to produce lots of ATP and power this active this active transport that is involved in the secretion of such substances. Let me just write this down. So the different types of digestive glands that we need to know, there's four of them. So firstly, we have the salivary glands, and these secrete saliva in the mouth, which contains amylase. So amylase breaks down starch into glucose. And this serves as like an immediate source of energy. So if we're really low on energy or really low on glucose, it's a good idea to just like eat a piece of candy or a piece of chocolate because this will automatically give us a lot of glucose through the salivary glands. Then we have the gastric glands, which are present in the stomach. And these secrete um, gastric juices, which includes hydrochloric acid, which we'll talk about why we need that later, and also proteases which basically break down proteins into amino acids. Then we have the pancreatic glands, and these secrete pancreatic juices, which include lipase, pro more proteases, and amylase. So again, proteases turn proteins into amino acids, amylase turns starch into glucose, and lipase um, works alongside bile, which we'll also talk about later. Lipase breaks down the fatty acids, sorry, breaks down the lipids into fatty acids and glycerol. Then lastly, we have intestinal glands. And these secrete intestinal juices via crypts of Libricon in the intestinal wall. So the secretion of these digestive juices in, is controlled in two ways. So firstly, we have the nervous mechanism, which involves the nervous system. Then we have the hormonal mechanism, which involves hormones secreted into the bloodstream. So firstly, let's look at the nervous mechanism. The sight and smell of food triggers an immediate response by, the ga by which gastric juice is secreted by the stomach before the food is even ingested. Um, and if you think back to your own personal experience, if you see or smell a food that you really like, your mouth starts to salivate and shows how it's like starting to prepare for ingestion and digestion. So when the food enters the stomach, it is detected by stretch receptors inside the stomach lining. So we have stretch receptors here. And this sends a signal back to the brain which triggers the release of digestive hormones to support long-term digestion. So basically kind of telling the body, yes, we have eaten food, let's start digestion. Um, so the second mechanism is the hormonal mechanism. So gastrin, the hormone, is secreted into the bloodstream from the gastric pits in the stomach.
and gastrin basically stimulates the release of stomach acids. So if the stomach pH drops too low, meaning that it becomes too acidic, meaning that there's too much hydrochloric acid, the gastrin secretion is inhibited um, by gut hormones. And these gut hormones are called secretin or secretin and soma, somatostatin. Soma, somatostatin, sorry, I can't pronounce that. So when the ingested food moves into the duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine, um, the duodenum releases digestive hormones. So this includes secretin and CCK, or cholecytokinin. And these hormones stimulate the liver and the pancreas to release digestive juices. So pancreatic juices contain bicarbonate ions. which neutralize stomach acids because these bicarbonate ions are alkali whilst the hydrochloric acid in the stomach is obviously acidic. So this returns the pH back to seven. And this is important because the digestive enzymes in the small intestine or the proteases, the amylase, and the lipase all require a neutral pH in order to function optimally. So if the bicarbonate ions weren't added, the low pH, the pH of two, um, would basically denature these enzymes and would prevent further digestion and any subsequent absorption of nutrients, which we obviously don't want. Um, so the liver produces bile, which is secreted into the um, duodenum via the bile duct. And the bile basically emulsify the, emulsifies the fats. meaning that the flat globules become smaller in size, um, which increases their total surface area, making it easier for the lipase enzyme to digest it. So this is what I was talking about previously when I said that lipase and bile work together to break down the fats. So just to help us visualize that, if we take a large fat globule and break it down or emulsify it via bile, it'll become lots of smaller fat globules. Um, and as you can see, there is much more area on the outside here for the lipase to bind to and digest into the fatty acids and the glycerol. So let's just focus in on the stomach now. As mentioned, gastric glands will secrete HCl into the stomach acid to create a pH of approximately 2. Um, these acidic conditions in the stomach have many functions. So firstly, it assists in the digestion of food by dissolving the chemical bonds within food molecules. Secondly, it activates stomach proteases. So pepsin um, is actually activated when pepsinogen is cleaved under acidic conditions. Um, and thirdly, it prevents pathogenic infection because the stomach acids actually destroy the microorganisms in ingested food. So the stomach wall is kind of lined with a layer of mucus, um, which protects the stomach lining from being damaged by these acidic conditions. Um, and the low pH environment of the stomach is maintained by proton pumps in the parietal cells of the gastric pits. So these proton pumps secrete H plus ions via active transport, which combines with the chloride ions to form the hydrochloric acid. Certain medications and disease conditions can increase the secretion of H plus ions, lowering the pH in the stomach and making it just too acidic. Um, so people that are affected by this may have to take proton pump inhibitors. and which are called PPIs. Um, and these drugs bind irreversibly to the proton pumps to prevent the H plus ion secretion. And this raises the pH in the stomach to prevent gastric discomfort caused by this high acidity. 
So unfortunately, though, individuals taking the PPIs may have increased susceptibility to other gastric infections due to this reduction of acid secretion. Thank you so much for listening. Hope this made sense.